Today, we're talking about the history of the Ryman Auditorium. I am so excited to talk about this. It kind of ties into the history of Muscle Shoals, which by the way, shout out to Rick Hall's son or grandson, I can't remember, but I think you commented in the video and corrected a couple of things. So if you do watch the Rick Hall video, definitely look at the comment section. And there were a couple of corrections that his son made, which thank you so much for making them. I'm just like also really excited that you commented like, hi. <laughs> There's a lot of soul in Muscle Shoals that people believe comes from Christian faith and that Christian background. If you haven't figured it out already, Roots Music is the T is a cross. It's a, it's a faith-based channel, but it's a music channel, but it's a faith-based channel. Um, so I just love those stories too that really resonate with the Christian faith and tie it in. The Ryman Auditorium is no different. The Ryman Auditorium was actually originally a church. We are going to get into the whole history of the Ryman Auditorium, but before we do, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified every time that I post a new video. I post videos about the roots of songs, you know, where the songs came from, the stories behind the songs, stories behind the artists, and of course, stories behind famous landmarks here in Nashville, Tennessee. So the Ryman Auditorium is a real place that you can visit today. They have shows going on all the time. There are tours that you can take, or you can honestly just walk next to the Ryman Auditorium right there next to Broadway and feel the history and feel the energy for yourself, even just from outside. Many people recognize the Ryman Auditorium as the original Grand Ole Opry, but actually the Grand Ole Opry had a couple of locations before even landing on the Ryman. The Grand Ole Opry did have their shows coming from the Ryman Auditorium for about 31 years. But what a lot of people don't know about the Ryman Auditorium is that it was originally built as a church. The Ryman officially opened in 1892, which was about 20 years after Vanderbilt University was first established. The Ryman was originally a church called the Union Gospel Tabernacle. And by the way, in case you don't know what a tabernacle is, it's a biblical term to mean a fixed place where people can worship. In ancient times, a tabernacle was typically a really light construction. You might be able to move it like a tent. It was originally called a tabernacle because in 1885, a very rich steamboat captain named Tom Ryman came to Nashville, Tennessee for a tent revival. At this tent revival was a preacher named Sam Jones who was preaching just about three blocks away from where the Ryman Auditorium would eventually be built. Tom Ryman comes to this tent revival, hears Sam Jones preaching, and his life was just completely changed. He ended up befriending Sam Jones, saying that he had this dream that he really wanted to build a tabernacle or a place a real building, you know, of brick and something that would last that wasn't movable or really light construction, you know, a real building of worship with Sam Jones. And he had this vision for him, for Sam, and for the community that they could have a real place to go to worship. Because before then, in 1885, a decade or so after Vanderbilt was established and so Nashville was really up and coming, a lot of infrastructure hadn't been built yet and was in the process of being built. And the community was really in the process of establishing itself to an even higher degree than they had been in the early 1800s. Sam Jones is immediately on board with this idea Although Sam and Tom could not do this alone. It ended up taking a real community effort of lots of people donating their time, donating their money to get the Ryman Auditorium or originally the Union Gospel Tabernacle built. <laughs> the first the first name is a bit of a mouthful. Union Gospel Tabernacle. <laughs> I wonder if people just said like, hey, you going to the UGT or something? I don't know if it had a nickname. <laughs> So in 1892, when the Ryman Auditorium was finally completely built, people had such a sense of accomplishment because it really was a community effort to get this thing done. Even though the dream was originally dreamt in May of 1885, like I said, it wasn't until May of 1892, or it might've been late April of 1892, that it was finally built and operational. It was in the same year in 1892 that the Union Gospel Tabernacle had its very first concert. I have to pause when I say that. Union Gospel Tabernacle had its very first concert. On May 4th, 1892, it was an orchestra that played at the Tabernacle and it was actually for a benefit. It was the Ladies Hermitage Association, I think it was, LHA. 
yeah, Ladies Hermitage Association that put on this benefit concert. And the whole point of the concert was to preserve the home and relics of Andrew Jackson. Even though the concert was an enormous success and the, pretty much the whole community came to it, they actually ended up losing money, which is just kind of a side note because that's kind of sad. But it's okay because the Ryman Auditorium officially had a reputation at this point of being a really great concert hall in addition to a place of worship and of praise and of lectures. Now at the end of May of 1892, just a few weeks after the benefit concert, Sam Jones was set to preach in the tabernacle for the very first time since it had been built. And this was a huge event. 4,000 people, which is a lot for, 18, for the 1890s. Like 4,000 was a lot. To put it in perspective, the Opry House that is operational today was built in 1974 with 4,400 seats and that was the biggest house that the Opry had ever been in before. Like 4,400 was, it, it's enormous. I've been in the Opry, it's enormous. 4,000 is a lot, it's a lot. The fact that 4,400 people showed up to hear Sam Jones or even just to see Sam Jones enter the tabernacle. This was just a huge, huge event. Everybody's there. They're all waiting for Sam Jones to come and to preach. And all of a sudden, there is this announcement that due to unforeseen circumstances, or I think the exact wording was that there were circumstances preventing Jones from fulfilling his engagement that night. And it was very abrupt. It was very unexpected. Everybody obviously was there to see Sam Jones. So the fact that all of a sudden he's not coming was just a huge shock to everybody. That is where the saying no show Jones originally came from. Kind of a show business saying like, oh, you're no show, no show Jones. If you have heard that before, comment below. Or if you haven't heard that before, comment below. Because I'm genuinely curious how many people are familiar with the expression no show Jones. There's actually a song though that was written and I don't know when exactly it was written. It's either the late 80s or 90s, I believe, but it was by George Jones and it was called No Show Jones. If you YouTube George Jones, No Show Jones, you'll get that song too. That following year in 1893, Vanderbilt University actually held their first commencement ceremony at the Ryman Auditorium, which was also a very big deal. And there were a lot of very notable figures and events that occurred at the Ryman especially in the 1890s and early 1900s, it was on fire. And there is a website, I will put it in the description below and I'll also put the link right here on the screen in case you don't have access to the description box. I don't know why you wouldn't, but um, you can go to that website and it has the full history of every show that ever, not every show, but most of the notable shows that have occurred at the Ryman Auditorium over the years. It's very interesting. I'll put it in, put it right here, I'll put it right here. After Vanderbilt had their commencement ceremony there, that really prompted another form of entertainment that started happening at the Ryman. I keep saying the Ryman, but at this time, just remember that it was called the Tabernacle, but they would have professors from Vanderbilt come and give lectures. They would have different preachers coming and giving lectures. It was a place of worship every Sunday. Lots of conventions there for different types of churches, Presbyterian, Baptist, all of the above. Susan B. Anthony actually took the stage in 1897 and delivered her lecture called The Heavenly Vision. And then in 1901, they realized this tabernacle was really more than a tabernacle. It was a place for lectures. It was a place for music, orchestras, everything. They decided to build a huge stage to accommodate all of the music and all of the worship that was already happening in the auditorium. Just three years after building the stage in the Ryman, Tom Ryman passes away the day before Christmas Eve. His funeral was on Christmas Day in this community that he had really built with Sam Jones. You know, the whole community came together to build the building and to have all of these shows and all of these wonderful things at the center. It's literally in the center of Nashville. So when Tom passes away, the whole community came together on Christmas Day for his funeral. On that day, Sam Jones got up to speak to an enormous crowd uh, who was all gathered there in honor of Tom Ryman. And Sam Jones took the microphone and said, I'd like to take a vote. Who thinks that we should rename the Union Gospel Tabernacle the Ryman Auditorium? And everybody raises their hand, the whole crowd goes wild. So in that moment of the funeral for Tom Ryman, Sam Jones gets up there and says that we're renaming this building, the Ryman Auditorium. And when he said that, the entire community had a standing ovation. They all stood up and started clapping and yelling and screaming. They were so excited to do this in his honor. Um, and if you just think about how that moment must have been on Christmas day, 
to be mourning such a significant loss, but at the same time, knowing that that legacy is going to carry on for generations and generations to come, it's like, what better celebration of life could you also have on, in that same moment? You know, it's just, I wish that I had been there. I would really think I was born in the wrong decade. <laughs> it just sounds so jovial and awesome that everybody just stood up and clapped and in that moment on his funeral on Christmas Day they decided to rename it the Ryman Auditorium. And now to go back to how this kind of ties into Muscle Shoals but if you watch the video about Muscle Shoals people who go to Muscle Shoals say that there is this spiritual basis to Muscle Shoals. There's like the spiritual base and it, it's what keeps Muscle Shoals going and it's what keeps it so soulful and so magical is the faith behind it. And you look at different stories and history and the places that I feel, you know, my observations, the places that have had God present in them throughout its entirety, those are the places where like real magic happens and where real music comes out of places that have that soul and have that spirit, that Holy Spirit. If you also watched my James Taylor video, James Taylor actually talks about this too. James Taylor was born an atheist, but actually became a follower of Christ through his addictions. And what he says about music, he has this one line in this one interview. I'm pretty sure I linked it in that video. If I didn't, I'll go back and make sure I do. But there's a line in an interview he gives where he says, music is just, he says, it's not a coincidence that music was born in the church. He says there is something so holy about music. And if you have a song that doesn't have that holiness to it, like doesn't have that spiritual feeling behind it, that song generally doesn't do as well as songs that do have that behind it, if that makes sense. When I tell the story about the Ryman Auditorium, I feel the same way, I feel that same theme because it was built as a holy house. It was built as a house of worship. And for decades and decades and decades, people prayed to God to watch over the Ryman and to keep the Ryman safe. And since then, so much magic has happened at the Ryman. And it is just the center of Nashville where everybody comes and listens to music and becomes one with each other. It's truly remarkable. If you've never been to a show at the Ryman Auditorium or the Opry House, I highly, highly recommend getting tickets and going and just experiencing it because or even if you've just ever been to a concert, you know that feeling of everybody coming together. Um, but the Ryman is different. It's definitely special. You can feel it when you walk in the doors. You can literally feel the history like seeping into your bones. And I think that's another reason people were so, so excited to rename the Tabernacle, the Ryman Auditorium on that day in that moment because they knew that there was a blessing behind this, you know? And it's crazy that that was in 1901 and now it is 2022 and it is still the Ryman Auditorium. And after this happened, just three years, I think, after it happened in 1901, I think Sam Jones had died in 1906. In 1906, Sam Jones actually passes away as well. He was in his train car on his way back from a tent revival in Georgia, but that was only like five years after Tom Ryman had died, or three years after Tom Ryman had died. As the decades have gone by, everybody might know Tom Ryman because of the name, the Ryman Auditorium, but Sam Jones was really behind a lot of it too. He was Ryman's partner. He is the one who made the suggestion to name it in honor of his partner. And he, he did a lot for the community. So I hope that we all like remember Sam Jones for more than just no-show Jones at the end of this video. Hope that's the takeaway here. Over the years, countless presidents and celebrities have performed at the Ryman. Elvis Presley, Minnie Pearl. The list is endless and my camera is probably about to die, but I will link a list to all of the performers that have ever performed at the Ryman in the description down below. Just another little fun fact, but when the Opry built the Opry House and moved, from the Ryman Auditorium to the Opry House in 1974 or 1975. They actually took a circle from the stage at the Ryman Auditorium and they put that circle right in the center of the stage at the Opry House. So now anybody who comes to sing at the Grand Ole Opry gets to stand in the famous circle where Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Patsy Cline, Hank Williams, Merle Haggard, where all of the icons of history once stood in that same spot because it's the spot that was right where the center microphone was in the Ryman. That's the circle that they took and put in the Grand Ole Opry. So anybody who sings at the Opry now gets to stand in literally the exact same location as 
all of their idols. The Opry House also has a backstage tour that you can do, which I've done and I highly recommend it. They actually take you on stage so that you can stand in the circle yourself. And I will put a link in the description below to the tickets that you can get for that tour as well. And don't forget to subscribe to Roots Music if you like these types of videos of history and the stories behind the songs and the stories behind various things. Um, yeah, I'm just a girl living on Music Row in Nashville, Tennessee, and I just love music and I love history. So if you do too, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. Oh, and don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. It really helps out my channel to have like one extra subscriber and one extra thumbs up is so so helpful otherwise youtube like pushes your video down into like the black holes of videos and no one ever gets to see them so if you thought that this was interesting and think that other people will think it's interesting too definitely hit the thumbs up button so that i don't get pushed down into the wild abyss <laughs> hungry for the road all my life thirsty for adventure all my youth chasing all my freedoms down liberty